Good evening and welcome back to the First Time Home Buyer Show. I'm your host, SD Klassen. As you know, we have absolutely amazing content coming to you live every night this week. We have Zaman Tungwa Kumalo on your screens at 7 p.m. with the Private Property Podcast. If you haven't seen that yet, please head on over to our Facebook page or YouTube and catch that insightful information from Zama's show. And of course, Mbali with the Farming and Agriculture podcast every Tuesday and Thursday night at 8 p.m. If you're ready to dip your fingers into farming and getting that land, you need to watch Mbali at 8 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday. Last but not least is Chad Viveros with the Home Shopper Show. That's every Monday night and Friday at 8 p.m. Chad travels around South Africa and views absolutely amazing properties, mansions, apartments that are for sale. If you're ready to buy and make that first investment, this is a show you do not want to miss. And without further ado, I'm sitting with the absolutely amazing Torai Jack, entrepreneurship, author, property mogul. The list is endless. Good evening, TJ. How are you? Esther, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. And uh, welcome to everyone else who's watching us and uh, greetings to your viewers. Thank you so much. Uh, like I said, you're no stranger yeah. to the screens. They've seen you on a few of our shows and I'm so happy that I finally get the opportunity to sit down, have the conversation with you. And as our viewers can see, you are an author, yeah. you are a property mogul, property investor. The list is endless. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Um, so basically, I, in the property space, I buy properties and out of that, I rent them out. Um, so we've got a business that's called M5 Property Addicts. But I think the journey didn't start there, SD. Um, right now, it might look like, you know, we're doing cool things. Mm. Um, we're in student accommodation. Uh, right now, we're at one of our buildings that we own. We do affordable housing. Um, and we also do a bit of farming, which is called aquaponics. So I'm quite big around real estate. Real estate for me, it's a vehicle that I keep in terms of creating wealth for myself, creating wealth for my family, my partners that I, that I work with, and uh, creating legacy into the future, which is the generations that are yet to come. Mm. Would you say real estate is a property, like a vehicle for change? 100%, 100%. Um, so I mean, if you are to look at it from the beginning of times, mm. um, so there's a, a good book that I read very often, and within that book, we, it's, land is always in and around everything that you do. So number one, you need land to, to cultivate and put food on the table. Uh, number two, you need land for you to stay. In. Mm. Uh, number two, three, as it is now, you now need land to be operating and do business in. So everything that we do really it revolves, revolves yeah. around some form of land, one or the other. And if you actually don't have it, you are missing out. Right. Yeah. And I think because um, we jumped straight into it and we spoke about, it, but I wanna I wanna talk a little bit about what we spoke about before the show off yeah. camera, yeah. and it was really about. And I love this question. I usually end off with it. Yeah. But you spoke so proudly and so well, and 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 I love that you you punt this and that you emphasize on well being, uh, and well being not only yourself but it's mentally, physically, yeah. emotionally, and I, I I feel that M5 property addicts would not have been a thing if you weren't sane in all aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. So maybe. With, uh, maybe we can, you know, educate the viewers and talk a little bit about what you do to maintain and, and keep pushing and keep... What motivates you to keep on being resilient? <laughs> um, I've got a family. Um, mm. I'm married to a beautiful wife. We've got two kids. My boy, he's 13 and my little one, she's six. Um, recently, my big boy says to me, he's tired of going to see African animals. Mm. So he wants to see a different type of animals. So I asked him, what do you mean? All animals are kind of like from Africa. And he says, no, like, like a white bear. And I was like, yeah, but we've been to Johannesburg Zoo. There is a white bear. He says, no, dad, you don't understand. I'm talking about an alligator or something. I'm like, yeah, we do have crocodiles yeah. here. But here's the thing. Um, the real journey for me is it didn't really start off by just being pushing boundaries. Mm. Um, it started off by when I, when I was born, um, what, what basically happened was that my, my biological parents kind of like left me. Mm. 
And with my biological parents being gone, uh, my biological mother really dumped me and out of that, um, I, I was looked after by foster parents. And my foster parents, you know, th they were good parents. I didn't actually know that, you know, these guys were my foster parents. And out of that, I started looking into my birth certificate at, at one point and it really said father unknown. So I'm like, mm. okay, so you are Tarai, son of the unknown. So where do you start from there when you are unknown? Because for some people, they are coming through and starting off their journey and that journey already starts off with something that you're getting from someone else. So the ability for you to scale from where you are is there. Mm. The ability is there. But we don't, we don't know it because it's every day for us. Yeah. But if you look at it from our parents, they've got so much wealth that they have and that wealth can literally come in and it can help you to grow. Right. But we don't have that yeah. or we don't take it in. So for me, when we, with my background like that one, my, my parents literally said, you know, go to school, get good grades. And I was like, yeah, that's what I did. And I started working in the corporate space. Uh, I was employed, I was a banker for most of my time. Um, and out of it, I, I used to ask myself the question, at that time, let's just say I was earning 100,000 rand um, per year. Yeah. And I would ask the question, how different am I from the guy who's earning 1 million? And that question kind of like sat with me for a long time. The one day, SD, I was actually contracting and I was getting paid like 600 rand an hour. And an invoice of my boss came in and she was getting paid 1,400. So I'm like, hold on, I'm doing all the work and she's getting paid double. What's the difference? So with those questions coming up all the time, I wanted actually to now try to figure out what else can I do to improve me? Yeah. Because that's where I, I realized I, I was the problem. So I started reading and from reading I started exploring different things and out of that I started one business, started doing well, I did another one, it failed dismally, I did another one, it failed, I did another one, it did great and, and then I went into chicken business and kind of like lost so much money around about 5 million and when you are married and you lose so much money, the conversations at home are very different. Yeah. Um, it's a scary position, um, you go through into frustration, uh, you go through even into denial that, mm. you know, this is not happening to me. Um, but then you start seeing other people that are winning. Mm. And with that, I started wanting to find out if I'm failing, but how come they are winning? And these are the same questions that I was asking myself when I was in the corporate place. Right. Um, and out of that, I started working with other people that were winning that really took me under their shoulders. And these people are called mentors and coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go online, you will see lots and lots of them. But the one thing that I picked up from there, SD, was that for every area of your life where you think you are incapable of delivering the best, mm -hmm. right? So it's not about, hey, I saw TJ, he does five kilometers a day. It's not about that. TJ is different. You, you are your own different person. Now, for me, I started looking at guys that are doing well in business, and I'm like, I want to be like them. So I reached out to the business guys in yeah. the business that I'm wanting to do. And the one guy said, okay, great, you're going to pay me X amount of money, I will teach you. I'll give you the secret sauce. So I was like, okay, I'm out. I, 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 I'm in debt right now, mm -hmm. but how can I do it? And because I had the drive, I wanted that goal, I looked for the money, SD. Mm. The money came through and I started seeing a little bit of successes. But it's not just about business. Business is one aspect of life. The other part of it was that what you asked, which is from a mental perspective, because when you're down and out like that in five million, you actually don't want to talk to people. You actually don't want to be on the phone. Mm. Even though the banks will be going to call you every day, you don't want to talk to them. You might even change numbers and things like that. So you're going into your own cocoon because that's what the world right. is all about. You know, when you have done something wrong, what do you do? Run away, mm. right? But for me, I didn't run away. I actually put myself out there. So when I started meeting people, even in the business space, I, I was very upfront. I do not have money, I, but I can do A, B, C, D. Mm. So I had something that I was putting on the table that I could do. Mm. 
So mentally, I think it's changed for me when I started seeing one or two opportunities coming up and the value that I was putting onto the table versus someone else coming in with money and that became a business. Yeah. The mushroom gave me a little bit of oomph. I'm like, I can do this. Mm. And that was coming from one project. But then there's different aspects, SD, of life. Mm. You, you can't be playing the rule games of soccer and applying them into rugby. Yeah. It, it's a different set of rules. So for me, when I started now doing business, I was an employee. Mm. So my rules of engagement was based what? Mm. On being an employee. Exactly. Right. But now you're doing business. The rules are different. Mm. So what do I need to do? To go and learn the rules of engagement in right. business. But with that, it also comes in with a different aspect because in business, when people are approaching you for whatever, mm. they have a motive. So how do you play in the boardroom yeah. within those motives for it to work for you? How do you play within the contracts when they are saying? So there's lots of aspects now that comes in mm. that you now need to learn. And all of that, I then realized, I don't know. Mm. Coming back again to say, how do you then stay ahead? Yeah. Well, if you know that you don't know, now you can stay ahead. Right. How do you do it? The basic part of it, find someone else who's doing it. And then you ask them, how can I also do it like mm. that? If it is a mentor, coach, whatever it is, then you pay for those fees. Mm. So I exercise. I didn't start off in life by exercising. I don't do bodybuilding to, you know, all of yeah. that. I can't even lift up like a 10K something. <laughs> but I do exercise mm. that feeds Taurai. Yeah. Right? And so I wake up in the morning, I go for my run. It might be a two kilometer run. But that works for me mm. because last year I wasn't even doing a two kilometers. Mm -hmm. So now because I'm doing two kilometers, next year I can think of five kilometers because right. that's a different me. And also the, the thing about your mind, Esti, we all come from different neighborhoods. Mm. Uh, we all come with, diff I like to call them hohos. Mm -hmm. Our heads are just designed in a particular way. Why is it designed in a particular way? It's about where we come from. It's about how we were raised. It's about what we were exposed to. Yep. So your mind can only relate and think about what you have been exposed yeah. to. So if you have never been to see or heard about the wall of China, your mind is blank to that. Yeah. So if you have never been exposed to the fact that you can write a book and you've never seen anyone else writing a book, mm. Your mind is, is blank. So I'll give you an example. Um, just before I started off my property journey the right way, um, I had gone through to a conference and for the first time in my life, I met someone else who was presenting in front and that guy was a black guy and he was talking about buying units in a, in a block of flats. Mm -hmm. And because he was a black person, I'd never seen this before, Esti. Right. I'd always just seen white people doing it. Yeah. So in my mind, it was a white people thing, right? And was I wrong? No, yeah. it was just my exposure. Exactly. Right? So I'd also never thought about, and, and here's the thing, I was actually staying in a complex, uh -huh. right? And I'd stayed in complexes throughout my life, but I never actually thought I could buy in a complex. Right. I could own this entire complex yeah. because I'd never seen it. So in my mind, it was so far mm. away. Mm. But now here is, I'm in a conference, I'm seeing this guy and I'm like, how different is that guy from me? Exactly. He's like me, he talks like me. Yeah. So I can do it. Exactly. So I find rel relatability, but within that, I challenge myself. Mm. So you gotta challenge yourself from time and again. I challenge myself and I said to myself, if he's buying units in a block of flats, mm. why can't I buy the block? Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> a, and it was a seed that came into my head and I started thinking hard around it. Mm. So I started looking for people that buy blocks of flats. I had a Jewish friend and I asked him, how does this work? And he told me how it work. And I was like, oh, okay. So let me go and find the areas where you can buy uh, yeah. a block of flats. 
and boom, we've bought quite a few mm -hmm. in the journeys that I've, I've journeyed on within the last five years or so. But it all comes back, Esti, to number one, whatever you are hungry for, mm -hmm. whatever you are putting your, um, uh, whatever you're putting uh, stuff in your head, yeah. it can manifest. And I, and I really say this from a very, from a very safe place. Mm -hmm. It can manifest if you want it to manifest. Yeah. It's about you. Exactly. Right. So being out there, so a lot of people, they, they go out, I'm sure you've been exposed to this ST mm. growing up, uh, and you got mates and you start going out. So you become a click of going out. Right. 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 So from time and again, you're going out. Yeah. So you're a click of going out. Yeah. That's what you do. Mm. That's what your click does. Mm. How about changing the same click? Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. But this time around, you're changing it for a business click. Right. So you remember when you went to Tebo Mountain yeah. and it was unseen yeah. or unheard of? Yeah. You did it. You remember when you guys went to the pub and you drank all night? Mm -hmm. You did it. You push boundaries, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Same thing in business. Mm -hmm. You just need to find your click. Click, yeah. And you start running with that click. And within that click, you start doing radical things. Right. But we only do it in the social space. Right? We don't do it to improve ourselves. Yeah. So I have people, SD, that I met at a Robert Kiyosaki conference like 15 mm. years ago. Um, I mean, like five years ago. Um, and I have people that I met at uh, Tony Robertson, right. this and that. And, and I can see their growth. And guess what? Mm. We started now having coffees. It's now your click. And now, yeah. that's it. <laughs> then they start telling me about other things that are happening that I didn't know about. Right. So if you take it into the social scene, it's like someone introducing Savannah to you for the first mm. time. Right. They start telling you, black label actually tastes better. You taste it. Right. And it's the same thing. And I think it's so profound because you, you talk a lot about what you feed your mind can then manifest, right? And to the viewers, I'd like to ask you, take a look at your life right now and ask yourself, what are you currently feeding yourself? And I think what's so important is to read, read, read. And let's take a look at our clicks. Do we need to, I don't think it's about changing your click. No, I think it's about having a lot of different clicks where you can find, where you see growth, right? And I think it's so important because you spoke so much about the people you surround yourself with is, can help you achieve these goals. And, they teaching you different things on a daily basis, right? They mm. know things you you had no idea. We teaching them different things sure. that they didn't know about. Hundred percent. Um, because we're all playing in different fields, and we can all teach each other something. And there was something you said about when you did property right. Yeah. And in your book, um, you I think you talk a little bit about the hardships and the lessons that came just before. So I like that you said when I did it right. So let's go back to. You spoke about businesses that failed dismally and how they were obviously, there's obviously ups and downs in everything we do. What was the, maybe let's, let's narrow it down, the one time where something failed dismally mm. and you were like, no, I need to fix this. <laughs> well, um, I think failing is part of the process. Um, if you're afraid of failing, mm. then you don't want to grow. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, it's like we, we have all seen kids. Mm. I've got two. We, they, they come up, they sprout, mm. they start crawling, and out of crawling, they, they start walking. Yeah. But how many times do they actually fall before they start walking? Right. Many a times. Yeah. But we never say, no, 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 stop. Right? Mm. We encourage them to do that so that they can grow and learn how to walk. Exactly. But in business or in things that we are trying to do, when we fail, then we pull back. And I think that's the wrong stance in life. Mm. We only learn by failing. And unfortunately, I think our educational systems help us to identify failure as something that is wrong. It's bad, yeah. It's not wrong. Yeah. So I, I am extremely, extremely grateful for all my failures. Mm because I am able to identify them. And in hindsight, I'm able to stop and I'm like, what did I learn from that? 
and I've implemented that. So one of my biggest failure is, um, Esti, when I lost the five million, yeah, um, it was a business that I was running on my own. And I almost want to say at this point here, never, if you're going to business, mm -hmm. never do it alone. Because there are so many things that you don't know. Yeah. There's accounting. Potentially you don't even know accounting. Mm. Uh, there is the actual business. Mm. There is the technical of running the business. So even though if you are maybe an engineer, you can't go and build a block of flats on your own. You can't. Yeah. There's a team of people that is needed around that. Mm. And I then, re that's, that's the one thing that I learned in my business, or potentially it is one of the things that, why I felt. Right. And why I lost that five million. And it's because I was not in a team, and within that team, people would be able to tell me, or from a financial perspective, if we continue like this, we're gonna lose money. Mm. I, I didn't have that. I was only looking at my own figures. I'm like, okay, I'm doing good. I mm. can pull it this way, I can pull it that mm. way. But if it is someone else, they've got a different lens. Right. They are looking at from outside to inside. And they can tell you the hard truth, yeah. whether you want to hear it or not, right? And there's an aspect of legal. There's a legal aspect to yeah. it. Not everybody is a lawyer. I was just signing contracts left, right, center. Yeah. They, they come through and say, sign here, Mr. Jack, sign here. And I signed. But what did it mean? What is the implication around it? Right. And all of this, if I look at myself with where I am now in business, mm. ST for all of those things that I've spoken about and more, I have a business partner. Mm. Someone who understands that, who runs with that. And they tell me now that, Tarai, this contract here, if we sign it, if this happens, we're going to lose everything. Yeah. Or if we sign this, this is what's going to happen. And now I start to understand all of those things. So I suppose, you know, we, the failures that we've got right. can either propel us into the next step of where we want to go to, or you can stay in that space of failing. And it's either you're growing or you're dying. Mm. You decide. Because, I mean, after you lost that five million, you could have stayed in that space. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you continue to, you know, and like, I think it's so important because on one of our episodes, we talk about having a power team. Yeah. And we never, I mean, I've never heard a lot of uh, guests who talk about how they achieve this by themselves. There's always people helping you, guiding you. Uh, and that could be anyone. It could be family members. It's about having that support. We always emphasize a support structure and having, and you were talking about when you did lose the five million, it didn't only affect you. Yeah. There are people around you that it also affected. Yeah, I mean, um, um, <laughs> uh, it affected my household. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the conversations with my wife was different. Mm. Uh, the conversations with my kids alone was different. Um, I couldn't afford basic stuff. Mm. You know, my kids want to go out for an ice cream. I couldn't. Yeah. Right, so it affected them as well. Um, it obviously, I, I affected my in-laws, my own parents, and things like that, uh, because now things that I could do for them, I can't do. Right. Mm -hmm. So they say that you know, from an African context, if you had to give one man a job, mm. you're impacting around about ten people. Yeah. So if there is a loss of five million, what is the ripple effect? Exactly. So the ripple effect is always greater. But sometimes we don't touch it, we don't see it. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, because it's, it's not something that you can it's touch It's not it. like in your face, yeah. Right. Um, but the reality of it is the, at the end of the day, mm. losing a big chunk of that money is a lot. But it wasn't my first time losing money. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say that I'd grown a thicker skin, but you know, uh, shortly before I got married, actually, I lost 100,000 mm. and um, that was almost 10 years ago now. And basically a friend of mine stole that money from me. Yeah. You know, we were setting up a small business about computing and he said that he's going to China mm. to buy computer parts and things right. like that. And he went and never came back, mm. you know? So that was my real first time of losing money. So the five million was something else. But then someone else could ask, so TJ, when you lost 100,000, yeah. why didn't you stop? Mm. You can't stop. <laughs> yeah. If if I did stop, then this conversation wouldn't would be, not happening. be happening, mm. right? 
Um, but again, from a culture perspective, ASD, I was just about to get married at the time when I lost that 100,000. Right. Um, and, and my family was, I'd introduced my wife, my wife, she's mixed. Mm. Um, and people were saying, you know, maybe the gods are not happy, the ancestors are not happy that right. you're going that route. Yeah. Uh, but here I am, 10 years later, I'm, ma I'm still married, happily married, mm. having bolo my life. And the ancestors, I'm not so sure, but uh, we continue. <laughs> We continue, we move. Um, and I was, a, I like that you, you brought it back to, it's the first time you lost five million. It wasn't the first time you lost money. Oh no. And just the, the other day, I was actually talking about how loss is so broad. And I, I don't think that once you experience loss once, you'll know how to deal with it again, because your loss was different. The one was 100,000, the one was five million. So of course, yes, it's a loss in general, but it's a different type of loss. And you're probably gonna deal with it a different way. 100%. Um, ST, I think uh, our conversations together with the viewers, mm. I'm a very transparent, authentic person. I want to give you the real truth. Yeah. And I want to give you the real stuff so that you can make a decision about your life mm. on where you want to go to. So I'll tell you what it is, mm. right? Um, when it comes to losing, mm. everyone who is married, knows that they've either been um, either put on the bench by someone else mm. until by the time they got married. Mm. For some people, it's a one boyfriend or one girlfriend. For some, it's 55. Right. <laughs> but we didn't stop <laughs> yeah. because it's love. Mm. Right? Okay. Now, what does that mean? And why am I bringing that conversation in? Mm. In business or in anything that you're going to do, you have to strike a balance. Right. What is that balance? You are going to lose. You are going to get hurt. Mm. However, if you are losing, you just need to make sure that you are winning more than what you are losing. Right. So when we are saying that, hey, we're doing well in our business, our business have done A, B, C, D, it doesn't mean that we didn't lose. You lose, yeah. It just means that over and above this loss here, we won X. Yeah. And for that reason, we are winning. Mm. And for that reason, when we lost, what did we do? What did we learn to improve so that we don't lose? Yeah. So at the moment, I now factually understand if I am to go into any business, right? At the moment, the SD, I run mm. the, the company M5 Property Addicts. Mm. Uh, it's a company that I co-founded with my business partner, Reta. But I don't own that company. Right. Right? So I've, I, my, I've got a trust. Mm. And my trust is with my family. Mm. They own that. I work for them. Mm. So in terms of risk mitigation, if something ever goes wrong, if I lose five million, it's not on me as, as, as a person. Yeah. It is my family. But that is also giving me a little bit of mm. um, yeah. I'm like, I should never get to a point where I can lose because this is for my family. Exactly. And this is why I do what I do. Mm. That's the motivation because I don't want them to fail. Mm. It's that ripple effect. We don't want it to ever get there. Yes. And you talk a lot about family and this brings me to another question that I like asking my guests is about uh, generational wealth. Yeah. And in your situation, just talking about your upbringing, you're starting the legacy. You're the start yeah. of the generational wealth. Yeah. What is TJ doing to ensure that there is going to be a legacy left behind? Oh, dude, there's quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we have time. <laughs> oh, Lord. Um, where do I start from? Um, mm. So there's a great book that I like to read very often. And within this book, it says that if you're to leave a legacy, your legacy should surpass the third generation from you. Right. So where's the third generation? So I'm number one, my, my kids are number two, and their kids, kids mm. is number three. So what am I doing to ensure that the legacy surpass them? Mm. Not touch them, surpass, mm. right? So number one, I now that I'm in business, I have structured things, and when I say structure, I just didn't go out and buy a house. Yeah. Right. I've also ensured that when I'm buying my house, 
where is it sitting? Who owns that house? So SD, I don't own anything, mm. right? Um, my trust owns everything. Mm. So the house stays within the trust. So if ever I die, SARS is never going to touch anything in my estate mm. because it's in the trust. Right. So the trust is going to live for a longer time right. on the terms that I've put in. Mm. Not on the terms that my kids have put in or their kids, but or on my terms. Yeah. So I am crafting the generation. It's intentional. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, I've got a business. Within this business, I don't own anything. I control everything. Control is power, Viva. Mm. <laughs> um, and with that, mm. everything again sits within my Interest. trust. And whatever that is happening within the business, when I die, it's going to continue within the same path of mm. that generation. So when I started doing property the correct way, I then started doing, I started researching, what can I do which is, that's intentional, that can help me to get to my goal? Mm. What's my goal? Legacy. But how do you do it? Mm. What is the practical? How do you move from one step to the next step to the next step? And you know, when I talk about all these trusts and whatnot, a lot of people then want to go out there, create the structures, ha ha ha. Five years they've got the structures, nothing has happened. Mm. I'm the reverse. Mm. I actually started having structures not so long ago. Yeah. So I'm a doer. So I'm like, let's do it. So I started buying, buying, buying. And then somewhere along the line, my legal team was like, you got a problem. Yeah. You're talking about creating legacy, but the way you're doing business, it doesn't do. Mm. Uh, it, you won't get there. Yeah. What's going to happen is that if you die, SAS is going to come in. And there's an estate. Yeah. They're going to take X percentage. Is that what you want? I'm like, hell no. Mm. But how can we do it? They educated me on how to do it. And then I started implementing it whilst I'm in the game. Mm. So we speak about people going back into, go through for conferences, go, th go read books, mm. um, attend um, whatever podcasts and, you know, get information to grow you. Mm. I'm anti that, mm. right? I, I preach it, but I'm anti that as well. You might be saying, TJ, but you contradict yourself. Yeah. Learn, mm. take action. Okay. Right. Because if you're just learning, you're just an information junkie. That's yeah. what you are. Now, being information junkie, what are you going to do? At the Bri, you are the guys who are like, you know, you can do property like this. Mm. Okay, how many do you have? Mm. Nothing. Nothing, yeah. But you have all the information in the world. But you haven't applied any of that. Or experience it. And I'm also all for real lived experiences. How can you talk about something if you haven't experienced it yourself? 100%. So from creating my legacy, ST, mm. it's about putting the structures in place. It's about leaving them now whilst mm. I'm still alive. Um, and over and above that, um, within our business that's called M5 Property uh, Addicts, we have actually created a school, right. which is called M5 Property Varsity. And within there, I take time every quarter, whatever I've learned, we put it in there as a yeah. course, and anyone who's out there, they will come in and they will learn. Mm. My view is that that won't die. Maybe the processes might change, but the foundation, the principles of mm. how you can buy a property the correct way and things like that, that won't die. So anyone else out there who's wanting to do it the correct way or the TJ way, mm. they can go and learn. And my view is that it's creating a greater legacy. I've got a community uh, and within that community people come in and we plug in and besides just creating a camaraderie we're always talking about property mm. and the, the other thing that I've done I've, I've written a book yeah you know so that was actually one of my questions sorry to cut you off TJ is about yeah. how are you giving back to the youth yeah. and you just you just answered my question is that you keep you need to keep recycling knowledge Good evening guys, I am back as you know, I am Estee Class and the show is packed with so much information that we've decided to give you a part two. So stay tuned next week again with Torai Jack. That is part two of Torai Jack's journey into property investment, into business, into his life, everything there is to know. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not all I have for you. This evening I've got a special surprise for you. <coughs>
Hello everybody, my name is Chad and I'm here from the Home Shopper Show. So you've heard about what Simon says, well this is all about what Estee says. <laughs> so if you need to tune in to her show, you definitely must do that. But also while you're there, while you're watching a show, make sure you tune in to the Home Shopper Show, which is every Monday and Friday at 8pm. So we're going to see you there. Thank you so much and goodbye. Take care.